Hello everyone, welcome back to the class of macroeconomics. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about an important topic in macroeconomics, which is about growth. So these are the topics that we are going to address today. To begin with, we want to ask, what are the growth facts? We are going to go through a couple of photos to see how does growth affect the way of living. And then we are going to talk about how to quantify growth. In here, we are going to review what we learned about growth rate and the impact of growth rate on how fast an economy doubles. In addition to that, we are going to introduce a model which will allow us to quantify some of the growth facts. And then we want to ask why growth is an important issue and then we are going to talk about what are the main drivers for economic growth. Finally, we are going to talk about how does output growth relate to unemployment rate. So the outline for today is as follows. We are going to talk about some growth facts based on looking at some photos, and then we are going to review the formula for computing growth rate, the rule of 72, and then we are going to explain again why the slope of the time series represents the growth rate when using logarithm plot. And then we are going to talk about growth accounting, which is an approach telling us what is the growth of output is coming from. Is it coming from the productivity growth or coming from the increase in the capital or increase in the labor? And then we are going to talk about the Auckland's law, which is a rule that tells us what is the relationship between the growth rate and the unemployment rate. Finally, given the time allows, so we are going to briefly talk about the solo model. And then in the class afterwards, we will talk about the solo model in detail. So now let's begin with today's lecture. So to begin with, we want to look at growth fact. And the two growth facts that we want to show as follows is that we want to illustrate that economic growth affects the way of living. And where there is growth, the living standard got improved. So what I want to do is that I want to show you the photo for four economies, for Taiwan, for India, for Spain, and for US. And I want you to see the photos in the early 1900s versus the photos in the early 2000s and then see how does economic development affect the way of living for people in these economies. So now let's first take a look at the photo for Taipei, Taiwan in the early 1900s. The photo on the left hand side is the photo for Taipei. And the street view looked quite nice, and there were already some buildings that were beautifully built. People dressed um, not the same as nowadays. On the right hand side of the photo, you will see some part of Taiwan that they still some wagons, and the, some people got barefooted, and the road was not paved. So then, obviously, some part of Taiwan is more developed and some part of Taiwan is less developed in the early 1900s. But for the part that is less developed, you will notice that of the living standard remain relatively low compared with the living standard we enjoy nowadays in Taiwan. How about for India? The photo on the left hand side is a street view for India as you can see in here, by then they already have some buildings that were beautifully built. The street view also looked nice. And the photo on the left hand side, in fact, it looks quite similar to Taiwan in terms of the living standard. On the right hand side, it probably because it is around the Ganges River, some people got naked because they probably want to jump into the water. But they are not that nicely dressed anyhow. But Obviously, from these two photos, you will notice that the living standard in India may be quite similar to Taiwan in the early 1900s. How about for Spain? You will see, wow, in Spain, 1920s, they already got metro. And on the right hand side, you will see, wait, people already have time for leisure by then. They sit outside of the cafe, 
and then they are enjoying the food. So for Spain, the way of living is completely different from the way of living that India and Taiwan enjoy in the early 1900s. Life in the early 1900s enjoyed by people in Spain already been quite close to what we know about the developed Western countries nowadays. People dress nicely by them. How about for US? The photo on the left hand side also show that the city already been nicely developed by the early 1900s and it's quite similar to nowadays. On the right hand side of the photo you will see that the people also are walking on the street, the road is nicely paved and people dress nicely when walking outside. So then how about these economies after 100 years? These are the photos for Taipei, Taiwan. As you can see on the left hand side of the photo, Taipei has some high rises. The street view now look nice, they have some trees, and it looks more like the western countries nowadays. On the right hand side of the photo, it is the street that was developed in the early 1900s, and some of the historical buildings are kept. But the way of people living nowadays are in a modern format which they have cars and people wear helmets when they are riding motorcycles. How about for India? The city also got nicely built from the macro perspective but when we look at the street view you will see that the road probably is not that paved. You will notice that the road was not paved well and there are some simple version of the vehicles that are used in India and then people ride motorcycles without helmets. How about for Spain? Well, on the left hand side you will notice that the street view looks quite similar to Taiwan nowadays. People also have cars and they wear helmets when they ride the motorcycles. And there are some historical buildings that remain kept and well maintained. On the right hand side of the photo, you will notice that people nowadays also have time for leisure and they enjoy the food outside of the building. So how about for Boston, US in the 2000s, where well, some buildings are built in the earlier times but well kept and maintained up to nowadays. The street view look nice, they have cars and people walk around the streets. So now let's compare the photo for the early 1900s versus the photo in the 2000s and see how does the way of living got changed for these economies. Now let's take a look at the changes for Taiwan. For the photo on the left hand side, it was the photo took in the early 1900s. And the photo on the right hand side was the photo took in the early 2000s. When you compare these two photos, then you will notice that Taiwan experienced a dramatic change for their way of living in the past 100 years. Nowadays, they already have high rises. The city view looks similar to the Western European countries. On the left hand side, it is more primitive and less developed. How about for India? When we compare the photo in the left hand side and the right hand side, which was the photo took in the early 1900s versus the 2000s, you will see that there are some developments in India as well, but the road still remain unpaved. So if you look at the photo on the right hand side, you won't think it is a photo for the developed Western countries. So based on these photos, I want to argue that for India, even though they experience some changes and some improvement for their living standard, but the change is not that dramatic compared with Taiwan. So now let's take a look at the photos for Spain. Again, the photo on the left hand side are took in the early 1900s and the photo on the right hand side were took in the 2000s. As you can see in here, the way of living remains the same. People have time for leisure in Spain. The only difference for these two photos is that in the 1900s, the photo are took in black and white and people dress formally. And nowadays, the photo are took in color and people dress more casually. But still, people are nicely dressed.
But how about for the U.S.? The photo on the left-hand side is the photo took in the early 1900s, and the photo on the right-hand side is the photo took in the 2000s. Compare the two again, similar to Spain, the way of living remains similar, except that the way people dress look different, and the photo are in black and white in the earlier times and colored nowadays. So then from these photos, we will notice that economic growth affects the way of living. When there is rapid growth, the living standard will get greatly improved. And we will clearly see that for the case of Taiwan. In the early 1900s, their living standard is closer to India, but nowadays the living standard is closer to the U.S. and Spain. So now we want to talk about the growth back in data. The reason why we want to look at the data is because in economics, a lot of research are related to numbers, and we quantify our analysis to provide the support for our argument. So in here, I want to remind you that we use the GDP per capita to measure the welfare of the nation, also to represent the living standard of the nation. Later on, I will show you why we can use GDP per capita to measure the living standard of the nation. The other growth fact that I want to show in data is I want to show the growth rate varies substantially across countries, and it also are not generally constant over time. And overall, we believe that the growth in the 20th century is faster than before. And I will show you what happened in data for the 2000s. So before we move on, I want to remind you that there is another computation related to GDP per capita. That is, we use workers instead of the number of people. When we are looking at a GDP per worker, it is not measuring the welfare of a nation, but it measures the productivity of a nation. Because when we look at the GDP per worker, it tells us how much goods are produced per contribution of worker. So then it is about the working efficiency of a nation. But in here, because we want to look at the living standard, and that is the is equivalent to the welfare of a nation, we focus on GDP per capita. So now let's take a look at the GDP per capita um, for Taiwan, India, Spain, and US. The vertical axis is in log scale, and the horizontal axis represents the time from 1901 to 2016. As you can see in here, the black dot represents the GDP per capita for US, the red dot represents the GDP per capita for Spain, the blue triangle represents the GDP per capita for Taiwan, and the green represents the GDP per capita for India. So from this graph, you will see that the GDP per capita for Taiwan is close to the GDP per capita in India in the early 1900s. But then in the 2000s, the GDP per capita for Taiwan is closer to US and Spain, which was much higher than Taiwan in the early 1900s. And that is exactly what we see in the photos. The living standard in US and Spain is similar in the early 1900s and the 2000s. The living standard is similar for Taiwan and India in the early 1900s. And in the 2000s, the living standard in Taiwan, Spain, and US are much closer, and the living standard in India is lower than these three economies. So we can clearly see that the GDP per capita does capture the living standard of the nation that we observe in the photos. Before we go through the detail to explain that the slope of the line represents the growth rate in this graph, let's take it as a given. Then you will see that the growth rate varies across countries. The growth rate for Taiwan is much faster than US, Spain, and India. And for India, the growth rate is relatively low before the Second World War. And the US and Spain probably are growing at a relatively more constant rate, especially in the earlier part of the 1900s and the later part of the 
Another thing that we get from this graph is that the growth rate varies across time. For Taiwan in particular, that the growth rate is much faster after the Second World War. For India, the growth rate remained constant before the Second World War. Then the growth rate in the 1960s to the 1990s was higher than the growth rate before the Second World War. And then the growth rate again rises after the 1990s. Nowadays, India also experienced a faster growth than before. So given that Taiwan is the economy that grew the fastest after the Second World War in the previous graph, and National Tsinghua University is in Taiwan, so I want to quantify Taiwan's the growth rate in numbers in the graph. So in this graph, the vertical axis is the GDP per capita in log scale. The horizontal axis is about the GDP per capita for US from the 1800s up to the early 2000s, and for Taiwan from 1950 to the early 2000s. As you can see in here, that the graph shows that the living standard or the GDP per capita for Taiwan by 1951 is only 8% of the US income. And then it is equivalent to the income level US have in the 1823. But then after about 50 years, the income level for Taiwan nowadays is about 54% of the US income, which is equivalent to the US income in the 1973. So in other words, that Taiwan experienced the rapid growth in the past 50 years. That is because it took Taiwan about 50 years to grow the same amount that US experienced for 150 years. So we say that the growth in Taiwan is super rapid. So that's what we say about the growth facts. From the graph, we know that we use GDP per capita to measure the welfare and living standard of a nation. We notice that the growth rate varies substantially across countries and is not generally constant over time. And overall, it's more rapid in the 20th century than before. Later on, we are going to explain why again. So the last growth fact that we want to look at is that we want to the growth rate in comparison. We said a country's relative position in the world ranking for income per capita is not immutable. The growth success, that is the case of Taiwan, it ranked 62 in 1960s, and now its income level ranked 30th. And then the example for growth value is the growth for Argentina. Its income level in the 1960s ranked 16, but nowadays it ranks 60. So then we know that the ranking of a nation's income level will change over time. The economy with high income does in the old days does not mean that it will also be a, uh, an economy with high income uh, later on.